crazy, but I didn't know he would. How did it run after that, Cat? It helped it. It didn't spin as much coming off the pond. Welcome to another high octane episode of Southern Dirt Motorsports. Good evening, everybody. This is Jeff Walker and uh, with the Southern Dirt Motorsports podcast. And to my far left over here is Gary Lawrence. And in the center is Julius Todd. And uh, we've got the honor this afternoon of being able to talk to Julius, talk about the old times of racing. Um, but before we get started this afternoon, I'd like to, first of all, uh, this is the first podcast that I know of that's uh, behind the uh, Hall of Fame induction. So I'd like to thank everybody uh, from Steve to Mike to Tommy to their wives, uh, just everybody that was involved in making that possible. Uh, it was really neat, uh, and I want to congratulate all the inductees into the Hall of Fame. That was really cool. Wasn't it? I know Lee Earl's already in. And and they had a wonderful crowd, a big crowd. They sure did. And they done a great job putting it on. They sure did. And and I'm glad that we got it started back, and hopefully we'll just keep it going every year. And to get the history of the of the racing, our racing that we've done all all the years, yeah. And uh, so I'm glad that they got it going. Me too. Uh, it, it did, like you say, the the crowd was. I think it was above Steve's expectations, and uh, and so he's already booked it for next year. So I know there's a date in September, so it's going to be a little bit earlier, and they're going to put more people in the Hall of Fame, so. And they're gonna have it outside, and, and we're yeah. gonna try to bring a few old cars, and, yeah. and, uh, and have, a, have a big time, a big time. Exactly <laughs> right. uh, Julius, did you ever think there'd be a Hall of Fame in Middle Tennessee or Upper Cumberland? <laughs> no, <laughs> when no. you were racing at the Sparta Speedway or Magnum Speedway? No. Uh, when did you see your first race? Do you, know, do you remember when you saw your first race? Uh, at Crossville? No, it, it, any where, where was, how yeah, was Crossville. Crossville first. Crossville? Went to, oh, yeah. I believe it was the first race I went to was Crossville, and I had an old car, and I ran up there. Really? Okay. Yeah. And but now that was uh, before they built the new track. Okay. All right. That was an old was, track. Was that racetrack located in the same location that the new track is now? Well, where the new track sat, and then back this side of it, on the it was on this side of okay. the track. Okay. And had a bunch of old pine trees around it. Okay. And it was in a, it was in a, kind of down in a hole like Yeah, it was in a hole. Was that, was that uh, back in the coop days and stuff? Coop they days. just quit running them. They just quit running them. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. They went to 55 Chevrolets. Okay. Fifty sevens. But now, we were talking just a minute ago that you had actually raced out at the old racetrack or you had a car that raced out. Yeah, I had a car on. The old VFW racetrack. Flathead Ford car I fixed up, 53. Yeah, wow. And, uh, I didn't know you went that far back. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, what I, I was telling Jeff about. I remember going over to your house that time, and you was down there, in that, down there, blow the house and yeah. that, making a circle down there in that, in that uh, hole down there. Yeah, and uh, he was, he, y'all had your own racetrack down there, and you and your brother, I think, had two old cars running, racing each other down there. <laughs> yeah, yeah there's, uh, and it was no flathead forward. I remember being no flathead then. Yeah, really. So, but you didn't drive when, at the old VFW, right? No. You were, you were just the car owner. Yeah, the I just had the car and my brother-in-law drove it. Well, when did you first start driving yourself? Uh, at Winchester. Okay. And, uh, of course, I had to race against Don Hobbs and all them good ones, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, uh. Was that at, what was that, at a 55 Chevrolet? No, I, I had a 57. Yeah, had you built that car? Or yeah, you did. Okay, good deal. Uh, where, did, where did you? Uh, I know that I grown up with you and everything, and all around you all the time. Where did you learn how to set one of the things up at? Just over a period of time, and trying our own. Randall Davis, he races, and uh, he sort of showed me some stuff on the A-frames and stuff to do to it. Then I went from there and just kept working with it and. Uh, actually the first time that I remember, that I can remember, I've thought about it. And the first time that I can remember seeing Julius and meeting Julius, he was building a Chevy 2 in his backyard. <laughs> and uh, 
I'm sure it had a 55 Chevrolet frame. It, most of them did back yeah. then. Well, uh, they can't be any 55 Chevrolets left in the world because mm -hmm. they used all the frames and everything. But on that car, uh, you correct me if I'm wrong, but you built the roll cage, you, yeah. you, you built the engine, and uh, you, you did the whole nine yards. Didn't yeah. you? And that car, Gary, you know how it is. You, you, I, I remember it, uh, Baxter, back years ago, Dave Bilbrey was racing up there, and Scott Bloomquist had came up there. Uh, he was going to test some after the races. And uh, he looked at Bilbrey's car, and he said, that car don't look right. And he said, what do you mean? He said, well, it don't look like a race car. It doesn't have the right stance to it. You know, in this car, the first time I saw it that Julius was building, it just had the right stance to it. You could tell that was a winning race car, and, and it was. What yeah. You won a lot of races with that car, yeah, didn't you? Yeah. Absolutely. Leo. Yeah. And when you was talking about setups, I may interrupt you, but like, last I remember, to ch check the wedge, you probably had two wedge bolts in the front, right? Yeah. And to set the wedge in the car, you used to put a socket on a floor jack and put it on the rear end <laughs> and jack it up. There wasn't no, and, and however the wheels came off the ground, that's the wedge, right? Yeah. And you kind of adjusted it with the uh, wedge bolts, they call them, in the front springs, right? Yeah, you turned them boats in to make it tighter, you know, and... Right. Tighten that left rear up. Yeah. yeah. Get it tighter to the ground. But, uh, yeah, he, that, he was, uh, uh, I know that he, he fooled with it for a while, and then, because he, he got it where it did it handled pretty quick, more than most people did. Yeah. And he, and he uh, you know, he, he was done, done well, so he got that thing where it handled a little bit. Well, you know, there's just times... You, you could have three different cars right there and, and what you thought was all the same, but they're not. Even even the cup guys, uh, they complain about how they can't duplicate. They might have a car, you know, and, and you know they're all laser and jig built, and yeah. they might have a car that's better than, than the rest, and that car was just a really good race car, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. You, sometimes I think you know it's all it's luck. You just you build one <laughs> and you look yeah. it up and it, it yeah. and it does, and then you build three more like it, and then and they don't none of them handle like that first one did. Do you have any idea how many years you raced that particular car? Probably about three. That's that thing. But about what, three. And years. then what yeah. happened to it? You just wrecked it, or no, I traded it off to somebody for something. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you built the motors and everything, and Judas yeah, built the motors. Yeah, Judas is like all these other guys. He he, he doesn't have no big budget. Uh, he he had to make do with what he had, and he used a lot of uh, parts that was maybe used or whatever. But he still he had the determination. He wanted to win the race, and uh, he he put it to put all that hard work to good use on Saturday night, and came home the winner. Didn't he? Yeah. More times than than yeah. not. Yeah, I go up to standard and get into pistons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I picked me out a set and called. He said, Where well, you take a hammer of that one? Like, we straightened it up and I put, Give me a motor. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I want a bunch of races with you. Yeah. Then yeah, a Buffalo Betty. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's a good motor. It's a 327. Really? Yeah. That's really cool, isn't it? Yeah, they, it was, I've told people back, you know, back, back in, you you run what you could find. You yeah. didn't you didn't go to the you didn't go order new stuff. You just went to stuff, whatever you could find your buddy's had or somebody you know for his hand or whatever and picked it up and put it together and and try to make make it do well out of it. Yeah. I know uh, all the different racetracks that you probably raced at was uh, Sparta, of course the McMillan, the new McMillan yeah. Speedway. And you even said you, you went. To the, the old I, I I still can't get that in my head, you know, that you, you actually were out there. But uh, uh, Buffalo Valley, was that one of your favorite racetracks? Yeah. I know uh, uh, my dad, he had a Chevelle. I think it was something that Pepper and maybe Lester Fowler had built. And uh, Richard Miller drove it. Do you remember yeah, Richard? Yeah, yeah. And um, they had the pedals uh, like... Um, the gas pedal was on the other side of the transmission, like where the transmission was. Your car like that was the pedals. No, staggered. mine was just straight back <laughs> on the rear. I couldn't drive in when it was over yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah, but mean, you see them like that. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. All the guys they had, and even I think even Bloomquist, he has his brake pedals on the far left yeah. and stuff in, in his cars. And even now, you know, he he says that's more comfortable for him. So 
It ain't when you first start driving, though. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Buffalo Valley was so unique uh, in that the first time that I saw it, um, it just looked like to me uh, two natural hills, and then uh, you know straightaways in the in the bottom there, and they just they were flat kind of worthy of the straightaways, yeah. and uh, the 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 tr turns were extremely banked worthy. But really? guys that knew how to race it, um, they they really knew how to get around it. I mean, they that was a good race track. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was banked enough, and, and you know the old cars handled. If they was a stiff, they had stiff springs on them. Yeah. They they handled good down there. Now if they had limber springs on them, they'd be a fall off of it down there. Yeah. But which track did you like the best out of the ones you raced on? Uh, Buffalo Valley and uh, Sparta had the best two race tracks that I raced on. You know, and the older back, you know, then they, you know, maybe everyone got to be good on life there when Jimmy Kill owned it. Yeah. And uh, now, Crossville had a good racetrack, and when I first went up there, I started racing up there, that was a good racetrack. And, uh, but the best I raced was down there at Buffalo Valley. Uh, one night I had my old car wouldn't run, and I just let everybody pass me, you know, Jimmy <laughs> Kill. Everybody <laughs> knows him. Yeah. And uh, he got up there and wrecked the field, and I was about eight cars back, and I thought, Lord, I gotta win this. And I just focused on that thing and it moved on up front. Everybody else is going here and there, you know. Yeah. They had the big one, like Talladega or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you still ended up winning the race. Oh, Jimmy Kell, he couldn't believe it, he said. <laughs> you don't ever give up on a race, do you? No. I don't care what you're running at, just keep fighting it. You don't ever know what's going to happen. I know, Julius, uh, y'all were talking about earlier, back in the day how everybody used to tow with a tow bar and y'all uh, and then eventually got trailers and, and yeah. that, that was kind of the progression for you too right i mean that's just kind of yeah. the way it went yeah but uh I, I remember you built you a ramp truck yeah and uh, that's about the time you had the chevy too right yeah that what that you won all the races with and it was uh you know just like uh not most of these guys nowadays but uh, you you not only built the car but built the engine, uh, got it to the racetrack, and then you drove it, and then you brought it home and <laughs> got it ready for the next week, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that was a every Saturday night job, you know. Right. And, and then you worked all week on trying to get ready for the next yeah. Saturday night. <laughs> yeah, but that was a that was it was just a different time then. You know, I don't know uh, the races. Uh, in comparison to like what you could make working, they probably paid a little bit more than what you could make working, right? Mm -hmm. At that yeah. time. So I know a lot of times in the summertime, that's all you did, wasn't it, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I had two motors, and uh, like I say, I got that 327 up there and built it. And uh, I switched my motor on, uh, pulled it out on Saturday. Friday night or yes, you know, Friday night, and then Saturday I'd put my other motor back in my car and go to Buffalo Valley. It okay. had a Toyota one piston seat. Okay. And uh, I could run it down there, but I couldn't run it up back then. So the rules were different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, I switched motors every week yeah. for a while, and I just got tired of it. And Most of the time, uh, of course, they didn't run as many classes back then as they do no. now. And the racetrack would stay pretty tacky or pretty heavy most of the time, especially at Sparta. That thing had a really good yeah. uh, surface on it. Well, yeah, the race in red dirt up there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, BK, he, he kept it pretty pretty yeah. hooked up, didn't he? Yeah, that, yeah, he had a good racetrack there when he run it. Yeah. Was that to your advantage of having it hooked up, or did you rather have it dry slick? Or? No, I wanted sort of about half and half, you know. Yeah, yeah. But Sparta, it was not as high bank as uh, Buffalo Valley, but still, it had some banking to it, didn't yeah. it? And then when we came to McMillan, it was kind of flat, right? Yeah. Where else did you go? That river. I raced some down there. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh... Did your car handle down there at Duck River? Yeah. That Camaro I had it handle anywhere. That was the best car I ever built. And, uh, for handling, you know, uh, I'd go to Chattanooga, me and Larry Spell, 
then I'd come back and, and we decided we'd go to uh, Duck River. And uh, I went down there and got ready to race. And I looked under my car and all the springs had come out from under it. All the tie boats and everything. I got it all back together. And uh, J.R. Kennedy won the most races at uh, Duck River. Yeah. And uh, Jimmy Kell, he told me, he said, come down there. He said, uh, I'll give you a little bonus, sir, if you beat that man. I said, well, I'll try it. I went down yeah, there. Yeah, Duck River, yeah. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. Went, I went down yeah. there and uh, me and him started on pole and he, well, he pulled up there and get a little bit further out front. Well, I never let off. I just kept driving him when I was on the outside. And the uh, heat was over with and I won it and I won the feature. And uh, that was, I loved that car. I, I wish I still had it. I mean, yeah. The I was just trying to think of his name. <laughs> it's just left me. The guy that built Sam Sam Pugh built Duck River, and uh, yeah, yeah, he, he, he kind of it was. Uh, it started out, you know, he lived out there, like where you turn into the racetrack. Sam did. He was a he was a great old guy, yeah. and I think he had built this racetrack back there in a field, pasture field, for his sons and stuff. Do you remember? I think in 1973 is when it started at Duck River. And uh, the infield was higher up than the uh, racetrack. You know, he just cut it down in there at that time. Well, there was a big flat rock in, out there too, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I remember a big rock. You run, you run across a rock, it's like running on pavement on one end there. Now, that thing had a big old pond out there in the middle of it. You know, yeah. you had to be careful on that racetrack. You go swimming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, old Sam, he was, he was a great guy. And, uh, of course, he's passed away now. And... Uh, you know, Jimmy Nylon got the racetrack, yeah. and he, he kind of made a racetrack out of it, though. You know what I'm saying? It, uh, guys like John Rochelle and, um, um, uh, what's his name, uh, that's uh, from Murfreesboro. Oh, wow. Two Stutz. car. Uh, no, the two car. Butch Eves. Butch Eves, yeah. Butch, Butch yeah. You, 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 most of the time, you raced in the other class. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, with... Uh, Guys like Billy DeLong and, yeah. he, and um, um, well, Larry was in there with us, wasn't he? Larry started out in our place, and then yeah. he, of course he moved on up. Yeah, and you know, like I say, there was only at that time maybe three or four classes, wasn't there? Yeah. There was just like a what they called a, I don't even know what to call them then, like a bomber car, which was basically a stock car, and they put yeah. a roll cage in it, and then he moved up to this hobby class, which. That's what you, you guys ran, right? Two bar on yeah. right on two and, bar uh, place. And then yeah. they yeah. and then they run other was either limited sports from then it went modified. Yeah. It's kinda uh, like uh, kinda like late models like yeah. we know them now back then, right? Yeah. They uh but that that uh, uh that track down there the when they first opened it down there, I know the the dirt was like more like a white looking dirt and it was uh it dry out real quick when it just yeah. He'd yeah, get dry yeah. slick. I mean, and and time they run the first heat, it'd be dry slick. But uh, I know after Nylon got it, then he he redone it and put some good dirt on it, mm -hmm. and it made a world difference in then. It made a good track out there. Who was your competition at Sparta? Who was? Who was your competition at Sparta? Who'd you have to beat when you went down there? Oh God, they bunch of them. All of them on the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I never won out up there at Sparta. I started on pole for Fred. Play it. Yeah. And he had a hobby car, I mean a modified car. And I had a hobby car. Well, in the feature, I left him, you know, in the feature. And, uh, but now he was hard to beat now, you know, but he was good. And, and, uh, and Earl Owens was hard to beat up Sparta now. I mean, he don't did track perfect. I mean, you know, he, me and him swapped some fenders and bumpers, and, but we still hung in there. <laughs> <laughs> did you, uh, when you first started, did you kind of just take off and, and start winning, or did it take you a while? Or no, it took me, I don't remember, two or three races. Get oh, that, that ain't nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> it took me several years before I ever won a race yet. But yeah, two or three races. Yeah, yeah and then true. you won. Yeah. And then you started winning pretty regular, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, now at Crossville, when I started, 
I went up there one, I believe we ran on Friday night, didn't we? Yeah. And uh, Fred Flat's daddy was a racing, a 55 Chevrolet, if I ain't mistaken. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said if anybody beat him, he was going to quit. And I beat him that night. Lewis, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Lewis Flat, yeah. that's Fred's dad. Yeah. Yeah. And you beat him up at uh, Crosswell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That was down in a hole. Yeah. The racetrack was. In this Camaro that you were just talking about earlier, um, that's something that came after the Chevy too. You oh, built yeah, it. Yeah. But it, did it still have a 55 frame? And, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, it was, uh, it was a Camaro with, uh, no, I believe it was, I believe it had a 55 frame hook to it. Is that what that, On the back? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. yeah. Went up well, to the it. front was 55, wasn't it? Yeah, on yeah. Top of it. They'd run the front of that 55, and then they'd yeah. cut it off like I can use Camaro behind on it. Oh, really? You could. I, yeah. I don't I can't yeah. remember how. I don't remember how it was. Do you? That's that five rear, rear pad. Yeah. Pad pad I think the reason they used the 55 back is because it was narrow, maybe, mm -hmm. or something like that. And the springs, the way the springs were yeah. on the front, yeah. was a yeah. different too. Yeah. Do you, do you remember how many times you go to Hill Hill? Because I always up there one night and was at Hill Hill. Twice. Twice. <laughs> Man, that was a long way. It was. <laughs> and and if, a, if a car quit on you, you have to leave it up there just about it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they, yeah they, 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 uh, uh, car we had, it quit running up there one night and we had to get a ride back home and then go back and get the car. <laughs> Man, that's a long way up there. <laughs> Were you towing with a tow bar or tried that time? Try their lid? Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. Wow. It was, it was down in a hole. I mean, way down there, wasn't it? There's about two holes down. <laughs> <laughs> you stand up on top of the, up on the edge, looking out over me, it looked like a little matchbox car yeah. almost running down there, wasn't it? That was a, that was a weird racetrack. It had springs running across the front straightaways. And like wet weather springs. <laughs> yeah, wet weather springs. And when you went down there, on one end, the turn was real sharp. You remember, yeah. you down there and almost spin out and just go the other way. On the other end, you made a big circle down there, like where the dam was at or something down there. And when he come out, the, uh, the first time they built that thing, the grandstand was out in front of the straightaway. In other words, he was behind the grandstand and he had to come back out on the track, didn't he? Yeah. Was this the track that Bobby blew? Yeah, oh, that's okay. one. The, and, he, and then he redone it and, and made the, moved the grandstand back further. And, yeah. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, it was something else. You, they was, uh, it was two different turns and, and you couldn't you couldn't set up for both of them, could you, Jimmy? Yeah. So you just had to do basic good on one of them, trying to make the other. Yeah, you got, yeah, if you got through one, you just hope to get through the next one. What about uh, any of the other racetracks up there at Burgess Falls or any of those? Were they already gone when you came along? Or yeah, they yeah, were, they've done. Yeah, I never raced it over on none of them, you know. Right. And, uh, I've always heard about them, but I never did go, you know, when they were racing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, uh, just mainly you stayed right here local and, yeah. and uh, you didn't venture out too far. And that was a good thing, right? Get home, sleep in your own bed. Yeah. That was a good thing. I know Gary's got a whole lot of tales about them going different places. And, yeah. You know. <laughs> and, Being all night trying to get back home. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. being something like that, we, of course, towed with the tow bar for the first three or four years there. And then being some of uh, it, you know, I'd have riding a, I come from Birch Falls, especially, I'd have riding a old race car just holding on to the steering wheel and have tires just squalling all night long trying to get home, you know, to, but it was better. It was a lot better to race at home. That's, that was, uh, that was the thing. Where did the 24 come from? Uh, Richard Miller. <laughs> <laughs> he assigned you that. <laughs> I borrowed him to so I could race at Winchester. Yeah. And, uh, Okay, my car, I didn't get to make it on Friday night. I built a motor, but it, and uh, so uh, I borrowed his number. Then that way I could race uh, Saturday, you know, okay. or Sunday, whatever we raced on. I can't remember. Was that to do with points or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Points, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so I I told Richard, I said, I'll give you number back. And no, he said, I won't go over 22. He said, you just keep that number. And I've had it ever since. Yeah, that's really something. What about the orange? Was that was that that was pretty much something that you stuck well, with? Well, I always but... liked orange for a race car. I always thought it looked good, you know. Yeah. And uh, I didn't like blue or white or nothing like that. No, but I want to be orange. Right. You just about a Tennessee orange, wasn't you? Yeah. So I don't know uh, 
anybody that went to Sparta or McMinnville or any of these racetracks uh, and ever saw Julius race, he basically wheeled that car up through there. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he was going whether the car went or not. He kind of, he made it go. You know, he had it on his mind that he was going to the front. Uh, did you use your shoulder harnesses? Because you're always up on the wheel and, you know, trying to wheel that thing to go. I front. made me some seat belts and uh, put in that thing. And uh, I just took two seat belts and I think I bowed them together in the back somehow and come down across and yeah. hooked them, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, now one night I forgot to hook them up. <laughs> And man, it was all over. I was all over that car. I mean, it's slinging you everywhere. I remember Lee Earl now. A lot of nights, he, he would never wear a shoulder harness. But uh, I was in Mac Mendel one night, and he put them on, and he said he felt like it was going to be pretty rough. He started back towards back. But he never did wear it, but he just wore a seat belt and stuff. Most of those cars back then, they just had, they don't have the seats like they do now, the containment seat. When, you know, like you said, if you didn't have a seat belt or, and you had to hang on to the stair wheel because if you didn't, why well, you was going to, yeah. you'd be all over the place. We always took a bucket, a little barrel and cut yeah. it out and made a seat. Yeah, just put a cushion in the, in the back. Yeah, in the back. Yeah. The, uh, they used a 15 gallon grease barrel for yeah. and yeah. cut it half and took made two seats out of it, one for this car and one for the other car. Yeah. But that's what they used for years and years. Because now yours had one in too, didn't it? Yeah. You guys are tough. 15 gallon grease barrel. You guys are that was no, no, no power steering, you know. Powerful uh, steering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Took all the power you had to steer it, yeah. You, you could, it's talking about that. Jews used to say would hold them arms up like that when he, when he yeah, drove. Well, you saying. know that, Jews? Yeah, uh, yeah, also he'd start leaning forward a lot of time, <laughs> yeah. you know, off the corner trying to get it to go go faster than what he was, yeah. But, it, uh, yeah, that was powerful steering back then instead of power steering. I, I was at Winchester one night and, uh, Oh, they had a wreck. And we started to race over. And man, I pulled board it and the steering wheel came off. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. And I thought, I'm going to get it back on. I can't stop them out front. <laughs> <laughs> man, I worked and I worked and I finally got it back on there, you know. Yeah. But. Yeah. Wow. And you still have a lot of your old trophies and yeah. your things that the, you were talking about earlier and stuff. Oh, I got a bunch of them, yeah. What year did you actually stop racing? Or have you ever actually stopped? <laughs> Well, you, you you would still go today, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. It's just something that once it gets in your blood, yeah. it's it's hard to get rid of. It. But your 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 people didn't race. You were like first guy, right? Yeah. You was first the, generation. First yeah. generation, yeah. and we've got uh, your son Jason and yeah. your grandson Kyle, and yeah. they all race. And we're going to talk to them a little bit after a while. But uh, you were uh, you had a lot of fans, and uh, I was one of them. Um, Always, um, even my wife, she said that uh, uh, her aunt and uncle, uh, they were big Julius Todd fans. And that's the reason why she started coming to the racetrack. That's where I met her at the racetrack. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that worked out great, didn't it? <laughs> so um, I think, uh, you got anything else, Julius, that you want to say? Or nah, any didn't. more stories that you want to tell? Now you tell them stories all night long, or if you don't do. Yeah. <laughs> they was they was a a lot of things happened back then, yeah. but I wouldn't I wouldn't I don't think none of us would take nothing for it because we, we grew yeah. up with it and and uh, and they enjoyed it every bit of it. Yeah. It was a lot of hard work, but it was enjoyable, wasn't it? Racing's changed a lot, and and if you got a race car, you got to work on it forty hours a week, yeah. just like a regular job. Yeah. You, you go to work, you better come home and go work on that car because they right. be something coming loose on it now. You gotta live with it, ain't you? Yeah, you gotta. That's gotta, how you win. They right. gotta take it to the living room if you go to the house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a full time job, isn't it? Yeah. I don't yeah. think they ever took no motors at the house to build, but I may have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's been great. And, uh, um, I guess we'll go ahead and conclude this episode then of Southern Dirt Motorsports Podcast. Uh, if you would like and subscribe to this channel, uh, and we'll see y'all next time.